Uh, yeah, global citizen, I'm Justin, your fluency guide from reallifeglobal.com, where we help you not just learn English, but to live it. And today, I'm going to teach you a very important, game-changing, real-life English lesson on how natives really use the simple future for going to. How we reduce this from going to, to gonna, to I'm gonna, and wait for it, I'm gonna. So today, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, and I'm gonna teach you a lesson that you will never forget. Oh uh, yeah. Even though our objective today is not to learn the grammar of this tense, just to give you an idea of the grammatical structure of the simple future we're going to, it's constructed with the subject plus to be conjugated plus going to and the root verb form. For example, I am going to teach you. You are going to learn. We are going to have fun. And they are going to criticize me for sure. But they're not all wrong. You can't discard grammar. Grammar is very important. As Michelangelo once said, you need to learn the rules like a pro so that you can break them like an artist. So today, learn that grammar and then let's break it like an artist. So the first reduction is very common yet often misunderstood gonna. I'm gonna teach you, you're gonna learn. You see, the thing is, a lot of academics believe that gonna should not be used in formal situations, but the truth is that native speakers use gonna all the time. I use it not just in informal situations, but in formal situations, in job interviews, in presentations. It's okay to use it in all spoken English. But in writing, gonna is only used in informal situations. So for example, text messages or informal emails with your friends. A common error that people make with gonna is they add to. So they say, I'm gonna to teach, but that's not correct. I'm going to teach becomes I'm gonna teach. The next reduction for going to that I'm going to focus on today is I'm gonna. So this is a reduction that you should never use in writing. You never use this in writing, but you might use this in conversational English or when you're speaking really quickly. I'm gonna teach you something really awesome today. I'm gonna go now. I'm gonna. Now I know there are a lot of teachers and academics who will just not recognize this, much less accept it as a functional, useful part of the language, and that's okay. That's how I was when I first started teaching. But the more that I started to study and analyze native speech patterns in some of our courses, for example, Fluent with Friends, which analyzes the way that the characters and friends speak, the more I realize that this is actually common. It's extremely common. It's everywhere. And here are a couple examples just to show you. I'm going to go change. I'm going to go change. I'm going to go change. I'm going to get another espresso. I'm going to get another espresso. I'm going to get another espresso. The third and final reduction for going to is definitely the most controversial it's the most colloquial, but in my opinion, it's the most interesting. I'm a. I'm a teach you today. I'm a learn English. I'm going to only in the first person becomes I'm a. Even though I don't use I'm a for I'm going to in my natural spoken English, and a lot of people think it's gangster and they frown upon it or they look upon it negatively, I do recognize that I can't control the emergence of the English language. The other day, I was speaking with my nephew, who's definitely not gangster. He lives in a middle-class neighborhood. He's homeschooled. And he said, I'm a go now. He said, I'm going to go for I'm a go now. So this really surprised me. In fact, it's what inspired this video. And I just wanted to tell you that story as a note that we can't control the emergence of the language. It's really interesting to see what's going to happen with these expressions as they integrate themselves into the English language in the coming years. Okay, so before we go, I wanted to give you some really good examples of this. So I'm going to show you a clip from Will Smith and the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Keep in mind that even though this was 20 years ago, a lot of the real pop culture, mainstream American slang comes from the ghetto. So give that a watch now. Now, you know what, Uncle Phil? I'm going to get through college without him. I'm going to get a great job without him. I'm going to marry me a beautiful honey. And I'm having me a whole bunch of kids. I'm going to be a better father than he ever was. I'm going to get through college without him. I'm going to get a great job without him. I'm going to marry me a beautiful honey. And I'm having me a whole bunch of kids. I'm going to be a better father than he ever was. 
Oh uh, yeah, real effort. I hope you enjoyed today's lesson. I certainly did. And I think I'm going to use this a lot more in my own vocabulary. But before we end today's lesson, I have two requests I need to make of you. First of all, uh, I have a question for you. Do you think it's appropriate to use gonna or amana or even I'm? Does this corrupt the English language or does it make it more rich? Does this affect your competency in the English language? I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. I'm going to share my thoughts. I'm going to share my thoughts. I'm going to share my thoughts. And finally, if you haven't already, make sure you give Real Life English a follow on YouTube. It really helps us out. If you like this video, give it a like, give it a share. And we have a free ebook, 101 words that you will never learn in school for real English, just like today's lesson. Oh yeah.